Hi there, this is Heather, Shutterbug 101. Today we'll be going over the Panasonic G9 and the 7 to 14 lens. Let's get started. The Panasonic G9 is a mirrorless camera with a 20 megapixel micro four-thirds sensor. This camera is excellent for both photos and video as it has stabilization in the body and lenses, 225 focus points, and a fully articulating touch LCD screen. For photography, this camera can shoot at 20 frames per second continuous drive or 60 frames per second in the 6K burst mode. For videography, the G9 has 4K video up to 60 frames per second, a microphone and headphone port, and dual SD card slots. This camera is also weather sealed and has Wi-Fi capability. Today we will be going over the buttons, doors, and menus to help you navigate your way around this camera a little easier. So today we are going to go ahead and go over the Panasonic G9. Uh, right off the bat here on the front of the camera you can see that uh, we have a switch over here on the front which has the one dot and two dots. The default for the switch is actually going to be to control the uh, silent mode on this camera. So I believe that, let's see, mode number one is going to be the regular mode versus mode number two, which is going to be silent. On silent mode, uh, it does gray out some options in the menu. Um, it limits to what you can do with the camera when you're taking pictures. So you do want to keep that in mind that if you do accidentally switch the switch up, it seems a little bit more quiet than usual. Um, or if you want to play in silent mode and you're wondering why you can't access certain features, uh, make sure that you switch this back um, and that should be, that should help you with any of those issues. This button here, of course, is going to be to remove the lens, which you just turn and remove. To put a lens back on, you want to put the uh, red dot on the lens to the red dot on the camera, just like that twist and click, and it should be all set. On this lens itself, there isn't really any switches or anything here uh, when it comes to stabilization or focusing, so you do have to control all of that in camera. But on this specific lens, this of course is gonna be the zoom from the seven to 14. This is going to be, I believe, the widest lens that you can get for this camera. Uh, so it's a great landscaping lens, um, you know, a great in general lens, even though it is an F4. And of course this ring up here is gonna be your focusing ring. Up here you do have a uh, flash sync spot. If you wanted to uh, plug your flash into the camera that way instead of using the hot shoe on top. This does just screw out and screw in, just so you know about that. We do have two buttons over here on the right. These are gonna be function buttons, so these are programmable. Uh, when it comes to uh, right out of the box, this top button here is going to be uh, to zoom in on the screen a bit. So this is gonna be a magnification screen to make sure that when you're focusing, it's indeed in focus. Uh, the bottom button here is actually going to give you a like a shutter speed effect on or off. So I'll show you what the effect will be, um, like a preview button essentially. Um, but I don't know anyone that's had a lot of use out of that setting. So like I said, these are programmable in your menu, which we will go over. Um, if that is something that you wanna change, you can change these to your ISO, uh, to change shutter speed, to change your focusing. Um, whatever you want to do, you can program to these buttons here that are easily accessible um, when your hand is on the grip. Going over the side of the camera here. So on this side here, this is going to be where your SD cards will go. So you just slide out and here are your two card slots. Um, these, of course, you can mix and match. So you can go oh, JPEG to one, RAW to another. You can have it be overflow, so once the first card's filled up, you can have it overflow into the second card. Um, you can do 
pictures to one, video to another. It all just depends on how you want to arrange that, but it does help with any organization uh, that you want to use that for. And we do have a little door here, which is going to be for our remote control. If you wanted to use a wired shutter release, this is what you would use that for. On the other side of the camera, uh, we're gonna have some more doors here. So this top door is going to be for your microphone port. Uh, so if you wanna get better direct sound than the mics on built into the camera, which is actually gonna be these little dots on each side of the hot shoe here. Uh, so as you can see, it's not gonna get you very direct sound built in. So if you want to use an external mic, which is what I recommend, uh, that's gonna be your mic port. This here is gonna be your headphone port if you wanted to hear how the sound sounds right away instead of finding out later. Um, you can go ahead and do this door, which is going to be uh, HDMI port, which is gonna be regular HDMI port to a regular HDMI port to connect it to your television. Um, you guys should have one of these laying around the house at this point with all of our uh, new TVs, smart TVs, um, you know, almost everything has an HDMI cable these days. Um, if not, they're really easy to find at your nearest tech store, whether it be uh, Best Buy, your camera store, Fry's, you know, any of those places should have an HDMI cable. And then of course you have a, um, a very unique charger cable as well, which, uh, took off a little while ago, but didn't last. Now they're on USB C's, even micro USBs. This is kind of a micro USB cable, but it also has a separate, um, port to it. So this cable should come in the box. You can actually charge the battery inside the camera. This can be really helpful in situations where, um, say you're doing a job, you're on a hike, whatever you're doing with this camera and your battery's at like 25%, you've already used your extra one, uh, whatever it may be. And you know, you don't have a place to actually charge your extra battery. You can actually plug an external battery pack with that cord into the camera and it'll charge the battery as you shoot. Um, so it's a good way to charge your battery on the go. So bottom of the camera has your uh, universal tripod mount, um, which is just gonna be that screw there that it'll be able to use on any tripod plate. And then of course we have our battery door here, which um, you just have this little switch here and it's gonna pop right out. Plug it back in, use a switch to lock it in place accordingly. Now, of course, we're gonna go over the top of the camera where it starts getting a little bit more complicated in a sense where we're just having more buttons to look at here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the mode dial here. Uh, so this camera does have a lock button here. So uh, you want to unlock it then lock it so it, you don't accidentally change your mode. The IA is gonna be for intelligent auto. Um, the intelligent auto mode is incredibly, well, intelligent, uh, in a sense where if you have it pointed at a person, it's going to go right into portrait mode. If you have it really close to a subject, it's gonna kick into macro mode. If you have it pointed at um, a wide landscape, it might kick, kick into landscape mode. Um, so just, it's built to recognize the situation it's in and change its settings accordingly. The P mode is gonna be your program mode. This is gonna be your first step off of auto. Okay, and hopefully if you purchase this camera, you're not just shooting on auto mode, you're ready to explore everything else that this camera offers. The program mode is going to essentially be auto, but it's gonna give you more control. So you can control how it focuses, where it auto focuses, where it's metering, um, your exposure. Your A mode, of course, is going to control your aperture, which is going to be this F number right up here. And you use this little wheel here to control that. So naturally, because this lens is a F4, the lowest it's gonna be able to go is F4. That's gonna be the opening in the lens, how much light it lets in. 
The S mode is going to be our shutter speed while the camera figures out the aperture. So here is going to be where it's considering our speed here. So the little two uh, quotes indicate that that's solid seconds. So it's six seconds, five seconds. And if we scroll back this way, now we're not seeing the little tick marks anymore. So now we're at fractions of seconds. So even though you don't see the one slash in front of it, um, this is actually a one fiftieth of a second. This is one one hundredth of a second and so on. The higher the number, the faster it's taking the picture. Um, that's also, you know, how quick it's letting the light in. So it's much easier to get a fast shutter speed in the middle of the day where there's plenty of light available versus, you know, at night where you're just going to get a dark image. So you do have to find the right balance between your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO, which we'll go over here in a moment. You have your M mode, which is going to be full manual. This allows you to control everything and everything. The camera only does what you tell it to. We have your movie mode, which you can record um, video in any of your manual modes here that we just went over. Um, but your movie mode will allow you to change certain mic levels, um, certain video menus that are not as accessible in these other modes here. So if you're specifically focusing on video, this is a great one to be in. Otherwise, if you're just taking short video clips, you can be in any of these modes. All you need to do is press this red button, press once to start recording, press again to stop recording. And that just goes for all video. You have your C1, C2, and C3 buttons. This is uh, gonna be your custom modes. If you're shooting in a situation where you're in a studio, you have regular lighting like I do with all of my YouTube videos. My lighting never changes because I have the same lights in the same place. Um, if I find the perfect setting to photograph in these lightings, in, in this lighting setting, then I can save it to one of these custom modes here. That way if I go out, I have an event, I am going on a hike, I'm shooting outside, and then I come back and I want to take more pictures in my studio setting, I can just switch it to my custom mode and you know, save myself a lot of time. So that's what those custom modes are there for. Then we have our little painter's palette mode. This is gonna be our creative mode. This is gonna be filters essentially. So you have like retro, you have different black and white modes, sepia, you know, they're just filters. And then um, my favorite one here besides, you know, the black and white is your one point color. This allows you to select one specific color and make the rest of the image black and white. So if you wanted to be really creative, you know, you had time, you know, you didn't want to do it in post processing, which you can also do, you know, in Photoshop. Um, you can select one specific color out and make the rest black and white just to get a little bit creative if you want to do that. And that is what that palette mode does. For the rest of the menu modes and everything, we're just going to go over it on P mode because in auto mode, um, it really limits you to what you can change. So it just does not make them available to look over. So at least P mode will cover everything that's available. Of course, we've gone over our hot shoe. This is for when you would like to use a flash. This camera does not have a built-in flash to it, and it's because built-in flashes are all pretty awful. Um, so when it comes to wanting some extra light, um, but you need the speed available, getting a external speed light, whether it be Panasonic, whether it be Godox, um, whether it be ProMaster, uh, any of those are going to be great as long as it has a articulating head where it turns, goes up and down, and then you want a diffuser like MagMod or something like that uh, to get a very natural soft look to your flash, which hopefully eventually I'll get to doing a video uh, when it comes to um, tips and tricks using a flash, so keep an eye out for that. V mode button does when it comes to your viewfinder because this is an electronic viewfinder where it does have a sensor here where if you bring your face up close to it, it'll automatically turn on. It's actually going to um, give you less magnification on the viewfinder if that's easier for you to see. So that's just going to be, you know, all preference when it comes to using that. We have our display screen here, which is going to display all of our current settings. 
You can get it to display on the back of the screen here if you wish, which is just the display button. If you want to click through there, there's all your information if you're used to kind of a DSLR look. Otherwise, you can use the screen as well when it comes to viewing as well as the viewfinder. Of course, we have our on and off switch. If you extend it past the on, it does light up our screen here so we can see it in um, dark circumstances where it's really hard to see our screen. Uh, we do have our adjustment wheel here. WB is going to be for white balance. That's going to control the temperature of your photo, so more orange, more blue. But overall, auto white balance, which it's indicating is on right now, AWB, is going to be really good at determining in everyday situations uh, what the white balance is. Uh, the only times you might want to tr uh, change your white balance is if you want to get a little creative, make it a little bit warmer, cooler, um, or if you're in a studio situation. Um, but overall, I, I like to just change the temperature of my things in Photoshop, you know, instead of doing it in camera, but that's totally up to you. Um, just remember that after you're done playing with this, make sure you turn it back to auto white balance when you change scenery. That way it's not too blue, not too orange. Your ISO, which is going to be your sensitivity to light, um, you can change this by accessing that button and then using this uh, adjustment wheel here. Um, this camera goes all the way up to 25,600. There should be no reason you're using that high. Um, I would say a good average to have this at for um, photos is probably about 1600 you know, for every day. I would set it down to auto and then set a limit telling the camera, hey, you can choose between ISO 100 and 1600 and don't go above that. That way, if you're just learning about your aperture and your shutter speeds, um, it's a good way to, you know, learn about those without getting too in over your head on the ISO. And then this plus or minus button is gonna be our exposure. So if we hit our exposure button, this uh, wheel on the back, you can see that if we go up plus, it's gonna make the scene brighter. If we go minus, it's gonna make the scene darker. Um, so having it on zero is gonna be what the camera recommends, but this will allow you to um, make your image a little bit brighter, a little bit darker without changing any major settings. We've already gone over our video button and this of course is just another adjustment wheel. Now going to the back of the camera here. Um, now before we go full onto the back, there is this ring below the, our mode dial that we went over. This is gonna control our drive mode. So the single square is going to be um, one shot. So if I click and hold this button down, it's going to take one picture versus the multiple frames here. The one and two Roman numerals are programmable. Um, so that is something we can do on our menu, whether you want it um, high continuous drive or low continuous drive. High continuous drive gives you the 20 frames per second. The low continuous drive, I believe, is 10. Then we have the 6K mode, which will allow you to take pictures at 60 frames per second, which is uh, definitely a cool setting to play at. We have the post focus mode, which is gonna be the little flower and mountains here. This is going to allow you to take a picture, um, something that's not moving, so something that's still, uh, wedding rings and flowers, um, you know, nature in general, where you want to pick your focus point after you've taken the picture. Um, that's gonna be what your post focus mode is. And then of course we have our timer, and I believe this is our uh, time lapse. Right, so going into the back of the camera here, we have our play button here, which will allow us to look at pictures that we've already taken. And then we can scroll through them with the wheel here, or we can actually click on this as well to go forward and backward through the pictures. The function three button is going to be the LVF or live viewfinder button here. What this button does is it's going to allow us to go specifically to the viewfinder specifically to the screen or set it on auto where that sensor is going to turn it on and off. This switch here is going to control how the camera auto focuses. 
Uh, AFS is going to be autofocus single. This is going to be for static subjects where the subject is still not moving, where it's going to focus and lock on, like flowers, landscapes, still lifes. AFC is going to be autofocus continuous. This is going to be for subjects that are moving, so it'll continue to focus as the subject moves in the frame. So animals, kids, sports. You have AFF, which is autofocus flexible. This is going to be essentially autofocus auto where the, you're letting the camera determine if it's still or moving and changing accordingly. And then we have your MF for manual focus. So like I was saying earlier, how the lens doesn't have a switch on it to switch it from autofocus to manual focus, this is how you would control that. And then we have our uh, autofocus or auto exposure lock where we're gonna lock in autofocus or lock in our auto exposure, our lighting, just by hitting this button here and then taking the picture after we've recomposed. We do have a joystick here where we can move our uh, focusing around, which will go over the focusing options here in a moment. You can also use your finger because it is touch screen. So whatever's easiest for you, you're welcome to use that. Function one button is going to, at the moment, be our back button focusing um, and taking the picture. So in case you didn't want to use this and you wanted to use your thumb, um, that's all preference as well. Personally, I like using the shutter button, um, but there are a lot of people that find it comfortable to hold the camera um, and take the picture with their thumb versus their pointer finger. So, you know, that is totally your call, whatever you want to do. Uh, we have our menu or our set button, uh, which we'll go over last here. We're going to skip over that for a moment. Our function two button, which is going to go over our quick menu. So going over our quick menu here, this is going to open up all settings on the top and bottom here that we'll be able to change. Now the specific function for our quick menu is going to be so you don't have to dive into your actual menu to change things and then miss the moment that you're trying to take a picture of. So these are gonna be the most common things that you would be changing. This is essentially how it's going to be uh, changing the color here. I would just keep it on standard overall. You can have it go vivid color, natural color, monochrome, which is black and white. You can also set your color settings if you'd like to do that. This is gonna be your uh, video file. So how, you know, how many frames per second, if you want it HD or 4K. We have our ratio size for our photograph, 4.3 or 3.2 is gonna be the most common. We have our quality of photo, so raw versus JPEG or raw and JPEG. We have, so up here we went over our, how it's autofocusing, so the AFS versus the uh, AFF or autofocus auto. This is where you're going to determine whether you want it um, to focus and lock or if you want the camera to decide uh, which is going to be the autofocus flexible. So that's all up to you. This is how it's going to autofocus. Or actually, this is going to be where it's going to autofocus. Um, so the 225 points is going to be the, you know, basically the whole area. Otherwise, whoop. otherwise you can pick custom multi, which is going to make it a smaller group of uh, points to focus on one specific area, which is going to make it even more specific. And then the pinpoint, which is going to be the super specific area that you're like, I just want this point to be in focus, like an eyelash or the part of a flower, something like that. You also have tracking. So if you were to press on something in the frame for it to track any movement, you could do that. Then we have face, eye, body, animal detection, which is amazing. So this is going to detect faces, it's going to detect uh, animals, that sort of thing, and uh, should automatically focus on those things. So if you're trying to take pictures of people or animals, that's where you want to be. Let's see. The next one here is going to be our metering. So when it comes to metering, it's where it's taking the light from. So multimetering is considering the entire image of where it's taking the light from and finding a good balance. Center weighted, of course, is taking whatever is roughly in the center. And you have spot and highlight weighted, which is just considering general highlights. The spot metering will allow you to, so for example, if I wanted to meter on something just to the side, get a little bit creative instead of something right in the center. I can go ahead, use my auto exposure lock, focus over here, and then recompose um, to 
you know, how I wanted to frame the picture instead of cropping later. Um, so that is what our metering is going to be doing. Then we have our exposure, which of course we also went through on this top button here, your brightness and darkness, your ISO, which of course also has a button on top here as well, and your white balance, which is this button. Um, and that pretty much covers a lot of the things that you would change on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to taking pictures. Otherwise, uh, you would go into your menu for any more specific things, which we're gonna go over uh, right now. Um, but yeah, quick menu really helps sum up um, a lot of things that you would change, so they're really quickly accessible. Uh, you can also see that there's a little trash can by this button as well, so if you are in playback mode, this will allow you to delete any pictures that you do not want. Now we're gonna go ahead and get into our menu mode here. So accessing the first tab here, which is going to be the red camera mode. This is gonna be our shooting mode. Um, like I said, a lot of these are gonna be accessible in your quick menu or on the outside of your camera or ones that you'll never really change. So if you do have any specific questions about the menu that I don't take the time to go over, feel free to ask me in the uh, comments below and I'll be sure to get to you on that. Otherwise, you know, we went over the aspect ratio, the quality, the focusing, um, you know, your filter settings are going to be the same as your uh, palette mode on your mode dial. The eye dynamic and eye resolution, you'll just keep those off, really. Um, the red eye removal is really going to be um, usable when you have a flash. Otherwise, it's not going to affect your photos. So you can have that on or off, depending on what you want to do. ISO sensitivity, that's kind of what we went over earlier when, it, when I was talking about the ISO and setting a limit to um, what you wanted it set to on auto. So you can have it choose between uh, like 200 and 1600, which is a really safe area for that. Uh, we have long shutter noise reduction, which if you're editing in a program like Lightroom, which you have which will give you more control over your uh, noise reduction. I would keep this off unless, you know, you're not planning on editing, you're just planning on taking it right out of the camera, not doing anything with it. You're welcome to have that on for uh, long exposures. Just know that when you take pictures, um, it's gonna take longer to be able to take another picture because it's taking time to essentially pre-edit it. Same thing with the shading comp and the di diffraction composition. Um, the stabilizer here, this is where you're going to turn the stabilizer on and off uh, because like I was saying earlier, the lens does not have the ability to, change, to turn it off or on. Um, this would change the stabilization, stabilization in the lens and in the body here. Um, if you have it on a tripod or a stabilized gimbal, you typically want to turn the stabilizer off because then it can cause more shake because then it's overcompensating. So otherwise, if you're hand holding the camera, you can have the stabilizer on. Uh, the burst shot, uh, one and two setting, that's gonna refer to the dial up here, that Roman numeral one and two I was talking about earlier, having your burst on high versus slow. The 6K photo and post focus, along with the self timer, all controls here. Um, you have your silent mode, which is controlled by the switch in the front of the camera. You can turn your bracketing on or off, multi-exposure, the timestamp if you want to have the time stamped on the photo. Otherwise, our next tab here is going to be our video tab. This is essentially going to be the same menu as our shooting menu is. It's just more revolved around video, so how you want it to focus versus what quality you want it, the format, if you want to put a filter on it, that sort of thing is all going to be in our video menu. Our custom menu here will um, allow you to more or less customize your function buttons, uh, which are going to be more around this area here. Once we go down, you can adjust your auto exposure or auto focus lock if you want it set to one or the other. Um, if you want quick autofocus, eye sensor autofocus. Um, if you want that autofocus assist lamp on, so if it has a hard time detecting any um, textures or information if it's too dark, it shines out a little light in the front here that's an LED light to help it focus. Um, focus release priority, 
uh, you have your, like your manual focus assist if you want that picture in picture, that magnification to help you just determine that it is indeed in focus. Uh, function button set. So if you want to change these function buttons here or the buttons up in front of the camera to whatever you wanted them to be. Uh, we have quick menu, the dial set. If you wanted that record button to just uh, work during the video mode or if you want it to work in all the modes. Your auto review, after you've taken the picture, you want to show up on the screen. Monochrome live view. This allows you to view the picture in a black and white, even though it'll take it in color. All this does is it helps you determine the values. So your highlights to uh, shadows, make sure that there's a good balance because those are easier to determine when in black and white than in color. Uh, for some people, this helps. For some people, they'd rather just see it in color. So that's really up to preference here. The peaking, the histogram, the the zebra, that, that's all going to determine your highlights and shadow balances. Uh, your guidelines or center markers, this will help you with your balance and your composition. Um, let's see, live, view, live viewfinder versus monitor display, um, your record area, your face recognition if you want to recognize uh, specific faces that you're going to be taking pictures of on a regular basis. We have the regular um, settings menu here, just the regular wrench. This is going to be general settings in the camera, like the time, your travel date, if you're traveling uh, to a different time zone, your Wi-Fi, so you can connect your phone to it, use your phone as a remote control, or even transfer images from camera to your phone, so you can share uh, with friends and family, your clients, uh, social media, Bluetooth, if you want to turn that beep on or off when it comes to focusing, uh, the headphone volume, you know, the luminance for the monitor, the viewfinder, uh, the USB power, the language even, your version display. So if uh, you want to make sure that you didn't have a firmware upgrade, this is where you would check. Um, let's see, the double slot function for your memory cards. If you want to reset the number of files, reset your settings. This is a really good button to know. Uh, just because if you start playing with your settings in your menu or even on the outside of your camera and now your camera is doing something funny and you don't know what, what you did, you can always go to reset and it'll reset your settings back to factory. So uh, that way it should just, you know, give you a quick fix instead of worrying about it on a trip or during a job. Sensor cleaning, which just shakes the sensor a little bit to try and shake off any dust. Um, formatting. This is something I like to go over with um, all my videos because a lot of people are unaware what formatting does. So say you got back from a trip or you got back from a job, you want to make sure that you take the cards out of the camera, you put them into your computer, you make sure that your files are backed up to a solid source like an external hard drive or an online source like Google Drive or Dropbox or something like that. You know that they're safe. Um, and then you want to start fresh with the card. Instead of going through and using the trash can and deleting all your pictures, you actually want to go in and format the card. And the reason you want to do that is because the re when you use a trash can, it actually just puts your um, file into a recycling bin where it recycles the, the picture, where you don't see the picture anymore, but it still saves the data. So you can technically still access that image if you were to put it into a recovery program. Versus if you format, you're actually permanently deleting um, all pictures on the card and starting fresh. Uh, when you use the trash can over time, that recycling bin tends to get full. It causes corruption, it causes viruses, you lose pictures, it locks up cards. Um, so it's just nice that every now and then you just remember to format your card. Uh, then you have a My Menu setting. So if there were any settings that weren't in the Quick Menu that aren't laid out on the outside of your camera for your convenience, uh, like formatting, you probably won't be able to do that. Uh, you can actually set it to a My Menu, which is this tab right here. That way you don't have to dig through these to find it. You can just save it to one tab and they're all in one spot for you, which is nice. And then you have the Playback Menu, which, is, which will allow you to arrange your pictures into a slideshow. Um, protect your pictures from being deleted. Uh, you can do raw processing. 
You can even do like clear retouching, resizing and cropping inside the camera. But overall, I would do all of that um, outside the camera in an editing program, uh, but that's just me. Other than that, uh, that pretty much sums up the G9. It's a fantastic camera. It's probably the f my favorite Panasonic camera overall with the interchangeable lenses, just because of both of its video and photo quality. Uh, this lens is also a pretty fantastic lens, has great glass on it, um, great for landscaping and just general walking around. And it's pretty lightweight for what it gives you. With all the tools that ha are on this camera, there is, you know, the, the possibilities are endless and you have a lot of possibilities um, when it comes to using it. Um, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment below. I'd be happy to get to any questions that you have. If you have any tips or tricks um, recommendations or things that you would like to see on my channel, also leave a comment below and I'd love to get to those. Um, until next time, keep your eye out for inspiration, Shutterbugs. Bye.